Sometimes videos require a bit of an introduction, other times they're really straightforward, and I'm happy to say that this is the latter case. So if you watched uh, my first unboxing video, you probably remember this. This is a Indonesian, most likely Sumatran, Piso Podang. This is an Indonesian kind of sword that takes a lot of inspiration, as you can probably tell from the hilt, from the tulwar. And while it's not in horrible shape, it's... Uh, the blade doesn't have any nicks in the edge, it's not bent, it's a rather nice looking sword. It's definitely in need of some cleaning, it has some rust forming, we'll check all of it in a moment. So basically this is a one of the by now usual cleanup videos, so we'll get right to work. Okay, let's take a quick look at our starting point, don't mind the uh, oily finger marks I already left on it. I was cleaning other swords as well, so um, so yeah, so some oil got on there. But the hilt is overall looking really good. There's even some remain of some kind of lacquer, maybe it could be like some uh, japanning, I suppose. Or I know that that was how a certain uh, metal process, metal, metal coating process, was called. But I have to look into that. But it could be something similar. Here we need some cleaning, there's a bunch of rust, um, and the blade is overall good, but especially on this side you'll see it's starting to form some rust. If I can get that in focus, yes. Okay, this side is, uh, actually this side is really good, but I think it won't hurt to clean it. So let's get right into it. We will use a little bit of autosol on this one because why not and I'll put the blade as usual um, flush on the table so I can kind of apply a little bit of pressure to it and then we just get to work so well <laughs> I would like ideally you would want to apply the autosol to the blade and not to the table but And there we go, just delicately get to work. Here you'll see there's a little bit of uh, paint residue, so hopefully that comes off by simply by cleaning and I don't have to then go with a like chisel or something to get it off. For now, I'm not worrying too much about getting under the langets. I want to first just get most of the dirt and rust off of the blade. Here's a little bit of an obstinate spot. You can probably even see it. Uh, yeah, here. So that may require a little bit more rubbing. Okay, um, well, this is basically what I'm going to be doing for a little bit, so I'll check in with you as soon as we have some results. So with a bunch of cleaning done, I wiped away a little bit of the muck and dirt here, and I think I'm going to stop here, and the reason why is that you can see the... I hope you can see, I don't know why light today is so weird, but you can kind of see the... Um, here where the there's a very shallow fuller it's starting to remove the patination actually you're starting to see a little bit of a trace of a line where the fuller is and i don't want to do that i don't want to remove like uh, everywhere where there's an edge remove that means basically material is coming off so we're stopping here we'll wipe off the autosol and dirt and get an idea of what kind of further work may be needed. So for example, I can already see that here, there's this little incrustation here. Um, here's, no, well, this one's no. But there are a few little spots that may need a little bit more detailed work. But overall, I think we're doing pretty well. This set, as I mentioned earlier, is practically perfect. So no need really to do anything there. Um, Okay, and then we'll move on uh, with the trusty toothbrush and try and get under the langets as well. So I'll give you a little bit of a view of the cleaning 
under and around the langets. You don't need a toothbrush, but basically any tool that can help you get in the hard to reach spots can help. But again, we're lucky in this case because this blade isn't really in bad condition. I don't have to remove much. I just need to make sure I get everything clean. And then we can just wipe it off. As you can see, I already got through it to it here. So yeah, that's basically what I do. You just keep doing that until you're satisfied basically, or until you're sure you've removed whatever you wanted to remove. Another thing I'm uh, a little bit careful with here is that I don't want autosol to get inside the under the blade basically because these swords were fixed in place with resins and stuff. I'll actually show you in just a second. Um, and I don't assume autosol would react negatively with them, but let's say it's not something I want to discover uh, empirically. And of course, when I say that I don't want to get residue and autosol on the uh, tar here on the resin, it's, I mean, as far as possible. So you'll see a little bit did get on here. I'll clean it up later. But I just wanted to show you quickly what I mean by that resin. Yeah, you'll see basically that the blade is fixed in place. It goes through the grip. It's kind of a full tang up to the bottom here. And then it's fixed in place with this uh, resin. I don't know. It's an organic substance. It's something like it could be wood, it could be tar, it could be a mix of resins or something. But something's in there keeping it still. Anyway, I'll uh, get to cleaning the hilt and then I'll report back with whatever <laughs> I need to report. And I'm happy to report the grip is also clean now. Uh, I was very delicate with this. I just used oil. I don't want to remove any of that uh, lacquer or whatever it is that um, we noticed earlier. So uh, it's a little overly shiny now. I have to remove a little bit of excess oil. But um, here, let me show it to you and you can tell me what you think. So this was the, uh, I think this was the good side of the blade, the better side of the blade. And this was the more rusted one. Let me get that ugly thing out of the way. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you when I mentioned how the patination um, starts coming off if you wipe too much, you'll see it starting to kind of happen here. So it kind of starts, you start seeing the shine of steel underneath. And this is something I wanted to avoid because what happens next is you don't notice it and you start like cleaning somewhere where you feel it's really dirty. And then when you wipe everything off, you have like a section that is uh, shiny steel and everything else is patinated and that just looks really ugly. So now I have a question and this is, uh, it's open to everyone of course. So feel free to reply in the comments. Uh, don't feel you need to be an, be an expert. But it's especially open to who has experience with these weapons and with um, standards of preservation for this style of weapon. So what would you do in this case? Would you clean it up more to bring out the shine of the steel? Or is this uh, lovely black patination something that you think is sufficient for this piece of podang? I'm uh, leaning heavily towards the leaving it as it is. Uh, I think it looks beautiful the way it is. It has all of its history, but I'm just wondering what any, what other uh, points of view and what others of you would do. So let me know in the comments. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon in the next sword video. Bye.